will not be until Monday there, so I will have all my time free there until Monday. Currently on I-40 West, driving through the city of Amarillo, Texas here.
food there was excellent. I would recommend that restaurant to anybody traveling through Amarillo on I-40 and even Texas. Outstanding. Steak was outstanding. Sweet potato I ordered was outstanding. Everything was outstanding. Even the cheesecake I had was outstanding. Temperatures continually increase. 
increase during the 20th century. No, they didn't. They peaked out in the 30s. 70s, they fell back. 80s and 90s, they rose again. And now they're falling back again. Now, presently. We're in a cooling cycle, which is why the weather is not a lot. In a warming cycle like what we saw in the 30s, 80s, and 90s, less snow falls on the northern hemisphere, the winters are milder. Summers get hot, especially beaches this section. USA and in other areas. I'm talking about consistently hot, not where a blocking high parks itself, like right now in the Pacific Northwest, causing hot conditions there. That, that's because of a blocking high, that's not because of global warming. It's causing the winds in the Pacific Northwest to come out of the east, which makes it hot because the air comes down off the Cascades and gets warmed up as it does so. So that's why they're hot right now. They're getting a wind that out of the east it has nothing to do with the climate. Actually, global cooling can make that area more prone to this type of weather because then the wind is going to come out of the east more often. warming climate, the wind blows steady west to east. So the west coast of the United States in a warming climate would actually not be as warm because you always have the winds blowing off the Pacific constantly because it's a much more stable jet stream. So the weather on the west coast in a warming climate would actually not be more stable. Wouldn't be any heat waves much because the wind always blowing off the Pacific, you can't get a heat wave there. Heat waves happen on the west coast when the wind comes out of the east. To get an east wind in the summer on the west coast, you need a very, very unusually placed jet stream. Cooling climate destabilizes the weather because more cold air gets further south. And this causes more aberrations in the jet stream pattern. A warming climate on the other hand, you don't have any contrast as much. That means the jet streams retract more more stable, especially in the winter time. So what have we seen in the last 10 years when we've seen the winters get colder and snowier? We've seen the summers more rainfall, more extremes, more hail storms. To get hail, you have to have cold air. Without cold air, you're not going to get hail. You've got to have cold air aloft to bring severe storms and hail. Without the cold air aloft, you're not going to get that. So cooling would cost more of that, not less. Growing up in the 70s on Long Island, there actually was not really that much snow overall in the 70s. I, I hear so much talk about the 70s being so bad. 
There was one winter in the 70s in Long Island. They didn't get any snow. They only got two inches the whole winter. 72, 73, I believe it was. And if anyone, if you want to verify that, go back to the weather records in Central Park, and you will see that hardly any snow fell that winter. So when I was young, I used to wonder, well, why are some years we hardly get any snow? Why do we get tons of it in other years? Why do we go through periods when we get hardly any snow for successive winters? Like the early 70s, Long Island didn't get much snow. And anybody that can verify that, look back in the weather records, you'll see. I was a snow lover and I came up more disappointed in the 70s for snow in Long Island. Only winter in the 70s in Long Island that was really bad was 77, 78. All the other winters weren't really that snowy. 78, 79, we had some in February, but we got more rain than snow in Long Island. My memory is crystal clear because I've studied climate and weather since before I was 10 years old. When I was 13 years old, I was given a book talked about climate and variations of climate. Back then they were in fear we were going into an ice age. And that's what the book talked about, what causes climate variations of possible. And they didn't focus that much on carbon dioxide. They focused on other natural factors for explanations in that book. Because in the 70s, they said the climate was cooling, but the 60s were when it was really cooling because that's when Long Island got lots of snow. In the 70s, it already started to warm because the snowfall in Long Island went down during the decade of the 70s compared to the 60s. There was a bit of a cooling in the late 70s, like 77, 78, was a bad winter. There was a lot of snow. That was the only winter in the 70s that was bad, really bad in the snow, at least there. The 80s, there wasn't much snow at all. So the climate was definitely warming during the 80s. But if you look at the activity of the sun during the 80s, we had a high max in 1980. We had a minimum in 85, but it wasn't a very long lasting minimum. It just went down and then in 88, it went right back up. So we had two high maximums during the 80s. So of course, yeah, there's no surprise that things were warming in the 80s and even into the 90s. Then the eruption of Panatubo came in 91, and that kind of erased the warming from that from the sun for temporarily for a few years. Um, then in the late 90s, well, the eruption wore off, but then we went into a minimum in the 11-year cycle about the same time, so it didn't warm right back up until we hit the next max of the sun. 98, 99, it got really warm. The winter of 98 was so warm that, yeah, that the oil consumption, there was an oil flood because it, the whole hemisphere had an extremely warm winter. So there was warming going on in the late 90s into the early 2000s. Living in Maine, the winter of 2001 to 2002 was one of the warmest winters I ever experienced. Hardly any snow even in Maine that year. 
winter of 2005, 2006, it was very warm. Up in Hall of Maine, there's the, there was no snow on the ground for most of the winter. The ground was bare. So we actually had some warming even going into the mid-2000s because of another high solar cycle. And then 2007, the tide began to turn when we went into the minimum 11-year cycle. Two thousand seven was the turning point. The winters in Maine after that year got locked, started getting worse. The winters in the hemisphere as a whole started getting worse, especially two thousand nine, two thousand ten. We've only just recently began to enter a cooling phase. In 2012, there was a bit of a recovery, which led to the drought in Texas and the drought in California because we had a maximum, but it was a weak maximum, but it was enough to arrest the cooling a little bit that started earlier in 2007. But now we're in another minimum, so the cooling has resumed. And that is why we're seeing this weather of the past 12 months in the U.S. has been the wettest on record. When cooling happens, the atmosphere begins to squeeze out all of its moisture because cold air can't hold as much moisture. As the air cools, the moisture will begin to condense out of it, meaning more rainfall. That combined with increases in cosmic rays from lower solar activity combined leads to more precipitation. Will this cooling continue? It depends on what the sun does. If we don't get a cycle 25, it is going to begin to accelerate, get worse. If we do get a cycle 25, it might, depending on the strength of it, if it's another weak cycle, might slow down the cooling for a couple of years. If it's a strong cycle, it might bring us out of it, actually. Because we've only had one week cycle so far. I said in the previous video, we need at least two or three in a row. For the cooling to really set into the point where the glaciers are going to start growing again everywhere, like they did in the 1600s, the Little Ice Age. It hasn't happened yet because the cooling has only just begun and it takes time for the system to change gears. It doesn't instantly happen. The oceans have plenty of stored up heat yet to give up. That's why the 11 year cycle of the sun doesn't directly affect the climate because the oceans buffer it. So that by the time the oceans are done giving up heat from the previous maximum, the next maximum is already beginning. So, there really is no cool down in the temperatures from just an 11 year cycle. It takes a longer period cycle to change the climate one way or the other. And there is 
less of a lag for warming than for cooling because warming, one, the, the atmosphere is immediately going to warm up, increase the solar activity. Two, it's going to immediately warm the oceans up because warm water rises to the top of the oceans. So the top layer of the ocean will immediately be warmed by an increase. Now, cooling is delayed because, again, the oceans, if the top layer of water gets cooled, it's going to sink down that cold water and be replaced by some warmer water below. It's a much longer process to cool the oceans than to warm them overall on the top layer. The top layer is critical because that's what influences the atmosphere. It's the top layer of ocean. From my research, there is more of a lack to cool the earth than to warm it. Increased solar activity will almost immediately warm the earth, but a decrease may not warm cool the earth for probably several decades. That's the reason, again, why the 11 year cycle does not have an immediate direct impact on climate alone in itself. And if CO2 really controlled the temperature, like they claim, the temperature would have steadily risen. They have not steadily risen. They've fluctuated up and down the last 100 years. I believe a lot of the figures they're putting out are fudged on temperature as well. That globally, we're actually below normal right now. We have been. And I don't believe they're telling us the truth about the temperatures. They don't, they're not giving us truthful figures on that. The weather patterns are reflecting that we definitely are in cooling phase right now. That global temperatures have been below average for some time. They're just not telling us that. So that is my take on climate. I'm going on 28 minutes, and I don't want to get cut off here in the middle of my conversation. I hope you enjoyed my take on it. This is as a result of a whole lifetime of research on climate that I have done. Observations, research. And I'm not saying I know it all on climate either. There are so many factors involved that man does not fully understand. But I believe the sun and its output is a major factor. Variations in solar output definitely influence the climate, long-term variations. Perhaps other factors, long-term variations that we don't even fully understand at this point. Man's activities are puny in comparison to the universal forces out there, the energy there. It's but not even a drop in the bucket. Them to say that man's activities control climate is. You're not looking at the big picture. Well, that is my discussion on climate. Not 30 minutes now. Um, again, I hope anybody who lives has gotten something out of it. I know not everybody would agree with what I said about climate. That's okay if you don't. We all agree to disagree. But I'm talking, speaking with a lifetime of research under my belt, even though I'm not officially a climatologist. Keep 
keep this running a little longer. I'm poking up drawers in here. There's a wind farm on the left. Lots of wind farms in all directions here in West Texas. I will be in New Mexico probably in about another hour or so. Should be getting close to Albuquerque by early afternoon. I'm not going to have a very long day today.
is six more miles to Baker, 21 to Adrian, and 82 miles to Capri, New Mexico. I'm going to run this video until I get to Vega and then call it quits on this video. It's coming up. Texas X3 exits. Exit 37, Business 40 West Vega. Let's 
So this is Law 1336, lodging, days in the subway, gas island. Also a dairy queen as well.
23, Texas Highway 214. Thank <laughs> you. 
exit 18. Thank <laughs> you. 